Hi guys, um, in a bit of a rarity for this channel, I'm going to be talking about one or a couple singular movies <laughs> in this video. Uh, I'm going to be talking about a couple of my favorite Christmas movies. Um, I could possibly be talking about three movies, we'll see where this video goes. They're going to be my favorite Christmas movies. It's a Wonderful Life, Love Actually, and Free Days. That one would cause a bit of an explanation, so let's actually start with that one. So, um, this movie, Free Days, there's a couple movies out there called Free Days, but I'm talking about an ABC television movie that was made back in 2001. And apparently, according to a lot of people, it used to get broadcast on TV, or at least ABC, a lot during the holidays, but it isn't really broadcast that much now. Now... I saw the trailer for this movie years ago and had always wanted to see it and never could because it's never gotten the DVD release except in the UK, but I think that's been discontinued and even then there's not really any way to get it. So, um, I was going through here one day and I actually found somebody that uploaded the uh, video, but I've also found that if you go on to websites like I offer, you'll find people that have made burnt DVDs of it, so you can order it there. So the plot of this movie, because many people won't know about it, is that um, the main character, Andrew, is married to his wife, Beth, but their marriage, while mostly stable, is, so is falling apart because he's just unhappy with the way his life is currently going, but with no particular reason why, and Beth, his wife, is questioning his loyalty to her. Due to a slight misunderstanding, they get into an argument, and then a couple of events happen that result in uh, some problems occurring. Then Andrew gets contacted by this guy named Lionel, and gives him a, who gives him a way to fix the problems. What am I talking about? Because I'm not really doing a good job of explaining it. You're gonna have to watch the movie. I'll link it in the description. But because this is a TV movie, don't expect the quality to be outstanding, okay? But let me tell you, this is a really good movie. But it's not so much about Christmas, it's more about the power of love and unity of family, husband and wife relations. It's pretty powerful, especially for me, who's experienced a couple of these situations and is only really now beginning to appreciate how much my family loves me, how much I love them, and all the stuff we do for each other. So trust me, I highly recommend it. Now, let's move on to It's a Wonderful Life, which used to be, without question, my favorite Christmas movie, even though I didn't watch it that many times. But now with Love Actually and Free Days, it's got some competition. So, um, everybody should know the plot for this movie, so there's no need to get into that. What do I think about this movie? Because like with Free Days, it's not so much a Christmas movie, it just ultimately ends up being set in the Christmas time. Um, I think it's a real great movie. It really shows how one person can give up their desires, you know, just to help others. And it's such a classic um, movie where you've got the good versus evil, but it's all set in a very common setting, makes it pretty great to watch. And trust me, I felt many emotions whilst watching it. I found certain bits very funny. I found myself face planning at a couple of the romantic situations because I don't really, can't really stand stuff like that. And there were times where I felt nervous, like the scene where George is about to jump off. Let me tell you, if you watch that season, this movie in black and white, I cannot stand watching this movie in color. It looks like a moving oil painting. Oh, man. You see his face sends me shivers. Ooh, yeah. And I was really impressed at how well this movie did as being told as a giant flashback for most of the movie. But the way they cut between um, it being told as a flashback and then actually being in the now, surprisingly it's done that we didn't even need the bit for the angels acting as stars at the beginning. Really, we didn't, although they do needed to explain the uh, jumps in time. 
And, uh, I gotta talk about this. That bit, well, that, um, old bridge guy fisherman is saying it's against the law to commit suicide around here. Really? Against the law to commit suicide? Well, first of all, it's against the law to attempt a suicide. That's what it actually should be. And what are you gonna do? Oh, yeah, we're going to arrest you. Oh, wait, he's dead. Um, uh, never mind. Yeah, really? Hello? It's one of the stupidest things for all law I've ever heard. I could go on all day on that, but I won't. Ugh. So, that's really all I can say about It's a Wonderful Life, but I think I've done it justice. And I'm really hoping I can pick the movie up one day, even though I'm not going to watch it that many times, because, well... It's a movie that you shouldn't rewatch to death, and I've rewatched so many movies to death when I was younger. Tons of the Disney movies, most of the Star Wars movies, which is why I took so long to uh, get any of them on DVD or Blu-ray. Same thing goes for the Harry Potter movies, and I still have watched them too many times to warrant me getting them. So that's all I can say. Um... I'll definitely rate it 5 out of 5 critique-wise. Personal-wise, I might go 4.5 or 4.8, but still, that's pretty good. I rated Shawshank basically the same way. 5 critique, 4.8 personal. And finally, Love Actually. So, some of you will know this movie, others won't. So, um, this is a movie that was, uh, made by a British company and takes place in London. What it basically involves is, um, there's a grand total of, like, uh, seven to ten, uh, story arcs in the movie involving mostly well-known actors. Alan Rickman, Emma Thompson, Lam Neeson, Craya Knightley, and a couple of other people that I honestly can't remember, even though they are well-known people, at least some of them. And it's all about people that gradually find themselves, well, they love a person, but are in various situations. You have the person who's too nervous to uh, profess his love, the people that don't really know each other, but just spark once they see each other, even though they don't really know each other that much. You have the person questioning his loyalty to his wife. You have the person nurturing her crush on a co-worker of hers. Uh, oh, and then you have the person who is in love with another person, but covers it up. Now, you may think I've spoiled the movie. Actually, I don't think I have. I've just told you the scope of the movie. So, I highly recommend that you guys watch this movie, and it's going to be pretty interesting. But, uh, note. They jump between the storylines a lot in this movie. It can be a little confusing, and, uh, because it's a comedy also, there's going to be times where you're just, like, shaking your head at the humor. Now, it's not... Will Ferrell humor, let me tell you, but there will be a couple of moments that are different between <laughs> funny and just like that, okay? I do recommend you uh, stream the movie before you actually decide, you know, if you want to buy it or like that. I definitely plan on picking the movie up. And uh, one other thing, um... If, uh, you're a fan of the song, All I Want for Christmas, you really should at least check out that part of the movie. I don't have to explain it any more than that, you just search Love Actually, All I Want for Christmas. Simple as that. And, uh, what do I give this movie? Um, critique-wise, it gets five. Personally, uh... Given how the humor got to be a tiny bit too much in a couple of situations, I think I'll give it four, but that doesn't really discourage me from recommending the movie. It's a movie I think people should at least see. You don't have to think of Spectacular, or that is your favorite Christmas movie, mostly because there's so many Christmas movies out there, but I recommend it.